Welcome to the Land Your Bet Sports Betting Podcast. Josh Lander coming with a Tuesday slate IST NBA in season tournament games. If you don't like this tournament, man, there's something wrong with you. I'm having a great time watching it. I think everybody is. Feels like playoff basketball. That Monday night slate was awesome, except for we kind of sucked on it. So let's go through it real quick. I have my boy Burt Oaks on the show, and we gave out some not great picks. I'm going to be honest with you. We got to be fully transparent. We had a, a couple of bad reads, a couple of good ones, uh, and we end with minus 2.8 units on the night. A few of the best that you can see here. Three of them that we got right six of them that we got wrong maybe probably underestimated a little bit of this uh, playoff atmosphere for the ist some of the unders that are more likely to hit at least in that eastern conference game the west went over as we saw as well but uh, not a lot of production from a few of the guys that we picked up on including zion specifically me i'm gonna be honest Burr Oaks got two of those w's there for us i had an awful night probably my worst night in the nba this season but you don't care about that hopefully so let's move on looking at the record still up 3.49 units on this show if you are following along on the coast to coast podcast with my co-host nate weitzer on the lines.com's youtube page that's where we have eight picks each and every day four best bets four play up props we are still up more than 24 units on the season in that show um, but i'm bringing you uh, my best bets my favorite ones from that show into here and a few that maybe i don't get to talk about as well so let's get right into that not waste any more time so that we can make some of the money back that we lost yesterday first game we've got here is the knicks and the bucks in that eastern conference game the other one obviously the lakers and the suns talk about that here in just a sec but first bet here is from that game and we're going knicks plus five i also really like the under 228 and a half I hit this at 225 and a half after it went up four points from the open. I did not think it would keep going up like this. I guess teams or betters are under the impression that there's going to be a lot more scoring in a game where the Bucks have sort of picked it up offensively and defensively, though. Like they're just a better overall team than the last time they played the Knicks, but there was a lot of luck that came into play. So, starting with why the Knicks are going to cover, they lost by five last game. They shot 25% from deep. Milwaukee shot 30, uh, 51% from deep. I, just five points with, with that level of discrepancy with, between the three point shooting is just that there has to be some regression back to the mean. Uh, there's just, there's no way that you can do that again. I, I just I don't believe it. The Knicks have gotten a little bit better at shooting as well uh, over the course of the last three weeks. Jay Randall was still in a little bit of a rut when these teams played uh, much better offensively for him in his last roughly a uh, couple of weeks of play. But uh, the, the other three, uh, Going back to the last three that they played with Jalen Brunson, this is a huge part of it. JB is very unstoppable to this team who sucks at guarding the point guard. Sorry, Dame. Uh, sorry, Pat Connaughton, whoever else is trying to attack the point guard on the other team. Guys are not very good at it. So with Jalen able to score in the ISO the way that he is, I do like that him to be able to help keep this close no matter what. He can always go get a bucket against his man, uh, that whomever's guarding him from the Bucks right now. Uh, in terms of the last three also going under, uh, that pace has been at 92, 94, and 97. All three of those have gone under. The 97 pace is with Dame a little bit faster when they, than when they were playing with Drew Holiday on the Bucks against this Knicks team last year. Still don't think it matters. I still think that the, the game plan for New York is very clear. Muddy it up. Make it a bloodbath. Make it a bruiser affair uh, because we can't really hang with this team offensively. And we know that. And, and the Knicks are going to have to use a lot more of their slobber knocker style basketball to hang with the Bucks in this one. And, and I think they're obviously well equipped to do that. They, they've done it in their last three. Um, and I do think that a five point spread, a little bit scary. I love the under at 228 and a half as it keeps rising, but the five uh, Nate and I both agree is a very solid pick as well. in this one with a team that should have a lot more, uh, like I said, regression to the mean in terms of the three point shooting for both of these squads. So uh, best bet number two here, we got to talk about K Dizzle because in that Phoenix and LA game, this is just like such a sweet spot. We hit Derek White last night over 19 and a half points and assists. He was averaging 19 and a half points against uh, the, the Pacers, especially without Kristaps Porzingis. KD, same concept. Um, when he plays the Lakers, he's just going off right now. Nate totally buys into the I don't want to be number two anymore narrative that KD is always espousing about LeBron and, and sort of the way that LeBron, if LeBron wasn't didn't exist, Kevin Durant would be the best player of his generation. Uh, he has another chance to prove that here once again, which is why in his last three versus the Lakers, LeBron playing there over 36. Uh, he's averaged 36 points per game and 9.7 boards. Like I said, with the Derek White bet, I was banking on he's averaging as many points as you're giving me for the points and assists. I'll take both of them. Same concept for KD. I love the points for him at about at least 30 in this one with Booker in it. Uh, and 30 plus the seven boards for him, I think, is a very solid bet, the seven boards. Um, so for the the field goal percentage for him, this this is what's like efficiency going crazy for KD because his volume is massive. A 38% usage rate, but he's still shooting 50% from the field and 50% from deep against these Lakers in his last three versus them. 
with Booker on the floor, and, and part of this, I do want to be clear, a little bit of these stats against the Lakers are bloated because of the fact that Devin Booker wasn't in at least one of those games. That said, when Book is in this season in nine games that they played together, KD's averaging 58% from deep because Booker's clearly the point guard, and, and that's always been the case, even when Monty, or not Monty Williams, excuse me, when Frank Vogel tried to say at the beginning of the season that Bradley Beal was the point guard, it was still like, all right, that, that's great to know. Devin Booker will be the point guard. Uh, so Devin Booker has continued to do that, averaging more than seven assists uh, in these games with KD. 30.4 points per game in the nine, <laughs> 90 games. The nine games with Devin Booker. I don't think they played. They definitely haven't played 90 games together. I meant nine games with Book this season. 30 and a half points per game for KD. Don't really think Book eats into his uh, scoring too much. Definitely the assists. The assists are still very high for KD. So we just go with the points and rebounds in this one to keep it simple. Got to go with the King, man. I mean, with third bet here, LeBron James, 25 and a half points. I know a couple of my buddies who are in the biz who are blattering LeBron today, 25, 30, 35 points for LeBron, not five, not six, all that stuff for him. Huge bounce back game. I mean, there's, there's a lot of stuff to say. LeBron's going to try. LeBron's going to have good success. It doesn't really matter who he's playing anymore. This isn't a LeBron where back in the day you go, is there any kind of team that slows LeBron down? Is he incapable of getting 30? No doesn't really exist anymore there's the, the way that he's the, the cerebral way that he plays the game at this age is is something that is better he's better than he was offensively at other points in his career uh, because of the fact that he knows how to use his body correctly at this point so I'm really into the huge bounce back for LeBron it's really now about does he care right I, I bring all that up to say it doesn't matter if he's physically capable of it it's it, it, obviously it does if he's if he's rested which he is so with the rest in a situation where he's done very poorly lately. Um, he's He has not gotten 25 points in his last four games, and he's really been averaging uh, around 20 or fewer points in that time frame because he hasn't been trying. There's been a lot of weird um, uh, in-season tournament games and breaks that he's sort of taken on and off. He's played fewer minutes against this team, more against that one. Uh, so I'm not really worried about the way that the very recent history for LeBron has shown that he's not scoring as much. This is a game that they need. He's made very clear that he cares about it. I've said this multiple times, as has many have as have many people. Um, and I'm just going to continue to buy into it. I don't think that he can afford to, to assist. That that's the fear is that like you never know if LeBron is just going to decide that he wants to score. He's going to decide that he wants to dime up his teammates. I do see this as a, like we have to win this, uh, and I need to make sure that I get us points. That was the case when he, they played uh, in the the game against Phoenix in the the group stage play as well. He went for 32 points, 11 boards, six assists. The six assists compared to the 32 points is what I'm banking on once again. In the games where he's the two games where he really did try, including that Phoenix game during the IST group play, that's what he averaged 30 points a game. And the other two doesn't care, d didn't even play 25 minutes in all those in the other two games. So uh, I do think this is a good matchup for LeBron. I incorrectly left a stat that says Mitch Rob about to eat him up. They're not playing. Please ignore that. Take LeBron 25 and a half points. I do feel good about that one. I'm going to put 0.75 units on that i want to be very clear i should have written that down i apologize but this is a bet that i feel marginally less confident about than the other three um so let me finish up with best bet four here new york is in milwaukee as we said i got a same game parlay for this one middleton four plus boards b uh, bro low rather four plus rebounds brooke lopez and Giannis onto to kumpo to be clear which Giannis i'm talking about four plus assists terrible time for a water break Middleton, four plus Rebs. He's done that in his last four versus the Knicks. I, I want to go into a little bit more of it so you know I'm not just going, oh, he's done it before, so he's going to do it again. Uh, he did go over in the last four versus them, but it's, there's a reason that I'm really looking into. He's not matched up with either of the guys who have the ball in their hands. I'll say any of the three dudes, because when Quickly's on the floor, he's also a main ball handler. Um, but Middleton is not matched up on Quickly. He's not matched up on Brunson, and he's certainly not matched up on Julius Randle. He just doesn't have the, the foot speed anymore or the strength to guard Randall and the, the foot speed or quickness to guard the other couple guys I mentioned, Brunson and Quickly. So he's guarding Josh Hart or he's guarding Dante DiVincenzo uh, or he's guarding someone, essentially Quentin Grimes, that's standing in the corner, not driving or dribbling, uh, but really just waiting to either crash the offensive glass as a super solid offensive rebounder in both Josh Hart and Dante DiVincenzo, even Quentin Grimes to, to a degree, solid athlete. All three of those guys are really supposed to be crashing the offensive board or waiting in the corner on the wing for a, a, an open three after someone collapses. Well, Middleton has basically now put himself in position, the, the team has, to be standing on the baseline near the basket, guarding the wing three, guarding the, uh, the, the corner three as well, where those guys are. And then his job is to make sure that those guys don't hit the offensive boards, which puts him in position to rebound. That's why I love these rebounds so much for Chris Middleton. 
Um, he's gotten five, uh, excuse me, he's gotten four plus, like I said, at least in, in the last four versus New York. He's gone over uh, four, four or more rebounds at least in every game that he's played 19 or more minutes. So when he doesn't get to, close to 20 minutes, he doesn't get the four or five boards. Fine. But I expect him fully to be playing at least that much in this one. Uh, I want to make clear, I'm playing this as the same game parlay. I'm going to play Middleton's straight rebounds as well because it's just four and a half. And I really like that. The other two are a little bit scarier. Brolo, you have to go all the way up to like six and a half. Giannis, you have to go over five and a half assists. Um, and that's because he does this a lot, which is why I'm targeting it. But I want to juice it down a little bit uh, and add it to this parlay. Getting to that in one sec. Brolo, four rebounds. He also does this against New York because he also is responsible for guarding someone, Mitchell Robinson, whose entire job is rebounding. That's all Mitchell Robinson is there to do. He's rarely even there to put back the offensive rebounds that he gets. He's kicking those out for assists. So uh, with Brolo needed to box out maybe the best rebounder in the league is what I've been calling uh, Mitchell Robinson this year. Probably not fair. There's a couple guys that are probably better, but he's one of the top five easy. Uh, and so Brolo is going to have to stay down there and box him out, which has been the case in the last bunch of times that they played each other. He's gotten four plus in eight of his last 10 as well. And just to accentuate the point of why he's of why I love his rebounds against New York, he had 19 rebound chances against the Knicks in the game earlier this season, last year in three games, 14 and a half rebound chances per, per game for Brolo. Now, his job is to rebound, is to out, box out Mitchell Robinson more than anything. Other guys can go get the rebounds if they want. But with 19, 14 to 19 rebound chances in this game, I easily love him to get four. If you want to do this parlay on DraftKings as opposed to FanDuel where I did it, you have to take five plus boards for Brooke Lopez. I would still consider it. It's a nice two plus, plus 215 on your money if you take it on, on DraftKings with Brolo five plus boards. Don't hate it. I'm, play, I'm being a coward because I had such an absolutely terrible night last night and i would really just love an easy win so we're going for a bit more of a layup with Brolo rebounds and lastly the uh, assists for yana same concept do just gets potential assists against this team because they are actually capable of walling him off from the basket other teams try to set up three guys in front of the basket to keep Giannis from being able to get to the rim it doesn't really always work with the other three guys like say washington doesn't matter if they threw all five of their teammates uh, their, their whole starting lineup and probably a few fans on the court i would still take Giannis to get his in this one, the assists are better because he does have to kick out once he runs into guys like Julius and uh, Mitch Robin, even Isaiah Hardenstein, who's been incredible off the bench defensively for this team as well as rebounding wise. So the potential assists and rebounds are galore. They will be for, for all three of these guys in this one. So I'm taking the assist for Yanni Boo Boo, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Middleton four plus boards, Brolo four plus boards. That should get you about plus 162 on your money on FanDuel if you take those numbers. Like I said, plus 215 on DK if you take the five plus boards for Brolo. That's all the time I have for you. Let me run through these bets for you real quick. Uh, New York at Milwaukee. I've got New York plus five there. I also love under 228 and a half. Um, I actually prefer that a little bit as it's, I, I loved it at 225 and a half and it's gone up three points since I said that uh, last night when I was looking at it. So I would continue to hit the under on that. Uh, the, the, the plus five as well. I'm taking that um, as, and going with it. Kevin Durant over 35 and a half points and rebounds. Love this bet. Might be my favorite bet of the night. I really think that's going to happen. Uh, probably going to look at 1.2 units on that. I've already got 0.6 on it just for, you know, cause I took it last night. Didn't, I wanted to see what happened this morning. Nothing has. So I'm put, put another 0.6 on it. Like I uh, told myself I would do last night. Then LeBron James over 25 and a half points, super chalky, not my favorite thing in the world. We just got bit by Zion 23 and a half points that he couldn't fucking get last night, despite a wonderful line for him. He just didn't shoot. Just looked like he was trying to facilitate he had six assists and eight shots. I repeat six assists and eight shots that he took. Absolutely mind boggling. We are getting sidetracked. LeBron James, 25 and a half points. My guy, Ryan props and a few others love LeBron James ladder 30 and 35 points as well. I'm not telling you not to. Uh, I just, like I said, I need to, accrue some more units uh, from that, from those losses before I feel comfortable playing stuff like that. Lastly, the, the same game parlay, another, I don't want to call it cowardly, but it's easier. You got Middleton four plus boards, Brolo four plus boards, Giannis Antetokounmpo four plus assists. Let's fucking get it. Y'all I'm tired of losing. I think you are as well. That's all the time I have for you in this one. I'm super pumped, as you can tell, to get these picks out. Uh, I'm going to be talking about some live betting ops as well. Continue to follow along, like, and subscribe. I see a ton of new people in there, and I am super grateful. Uh, we are continuing to make this uh, a pretty fun place to talk about hoops and stuff. Hoping to get some live streams out to you guys. I'm going to get a, a couple of new uh, sports bettors on with me as well. My guy, Brad Thomas, Lord BLT. He's coming on next week. I'm going to get Brian versus the books, one of my favorite NBA betters as well uh, on here. And then I'm definitely looking to get Crispy Cappin on here as well to uh, to get one of my favorite cappers for NBA on the show with me. But 
continue to ride with me, guys. I appreciate you all. And until I see you next, happy betting.